Hi everyone, this is another Ableton Live tutorial. Um, it's going to be a quick one about the I.O. section, internal routing, grouping, and busing, and why we want to use those things and what they're good for. First thing is organization, in my opinion. Um, it allows me to group things and to bus them and then send them to the stereo output. This allows for me to do some final touches on many sounds at the same time and it allows me to think about them in my head first about how I want them to be organized and then express that using the buses and then send those to the master track. So I already have a MIDI track pulled up here. I'm going to hit Command R and rename it Kick for now. Right off the bat I'm going to rename it and give it a color. In a template that I already have set up I have all of my colors for my different elements and the tracks that I use most often and the um, settings that I use most often on the plugins and everything that's all already loaded up for me so I'm not always starting with just a blank slate and I feel that works best but for now we'll just color code that and uh, the first thing I'd like to do is create a new MIDI clip you can do that with shift uh, command M or right click and insert a new MIDI clip um, we're going to give it the same color and we could also rename that region kick so right off the bat um, we have some solid organization and that's really it's, it's difficult sometimes when you're in a, right at the moment of making something you kind of overlook these things but if you can get in the habit of doing them automatically even if you're working fast it really really helps. So I'm going to load up a drum rack and we'll just dump that on there and we'll call it good. As soon as I assign something in there it changed from no output to master. And now when I record on this I can hear some sounds and that's great. That's what I want. Uh, the kick is going into the master bus directly. That's how every track, audio, or MIDI is set up to do in Ableton and most likely any other DAW that you have. I'm just going to draw in a really simple pattern to get things going. And that should do the trick. Sometimes I like to maybe just draw in a couple of things and then if I wanted to I could go option and click and drag and duplicate that region and if I want to take all those regions I could hit command J and make them all one again. Just different ways of going about the same thing. So now that I have that in place I'm going to hit command D and duplicate everything. Now I'm going to rename that new duplication kick sub. And this will be demonstrating if you have uh, multiple textural elements or layers creating one final sound. So in a lot of dance tracks, it'll be like a kick sub and a kick upper tone and maybe even a mid tone. So you could split it up into many different sections and have lots of control over the end sound. Uh, to show the effect even more, we'll put an EQ8 on the kick sub, do a high cut. And we'll do some kind of low boost. Record on the proper track. And we can hear it's a lot more tubbier now. If you ever feel like the sample is too quiet in the drum cell, you can go click on this button right here. Right now it's macroed. We're going to unmap that from velocity sensitivity, which is really the volume in this case. And we're just going to restore that back to zero. You can hear the samples much louder now. We're going to do the same thing here as well. Now on our other kick, let's put an EQ8 on there. We're going to cut the lows because our sub is now taking care of lows. And we'll just boost some kind of upper frequency tone, whatever it may be. Whatever fits the track or the key of the song. 
So you can hear there's almost no bass information. We're just getting these kind of clicks, but that's what we want. When we play the two together, well, here's just the kick. Now here's the sub. When we play the two together, we get that final sound. So we've layered something, we've given it different textural elements, and now what we're going to do is highlight those different things and hit Command G and make a group. We're going to hit Command R to rename it, Kick G for group. So there's our kick group. We're going to give it the same color, and now, boom, when we collapse all of that, it's neatly packed away. Now that's our kick group containing all of our different kick sound elements, wherever they may be in the arrangement, whatever effects may have on them. Now we can do some final effects in here. You could maybe drag in uh, an EQ8 or anything like that. You could drag in a compressor. And now we're affecting with this one compressor these two sounds at the same time. So that's great. That's exactly what we want. We're going to hit Shift Command T and make a new MIDI track. And we're going to hit Command R and rename it Snare. Now we're going to add in a new drum rack. And it's going to be our snare sound. And we'll just do hit carbon. Just picking these at random here. So this is great. We have um, different kind of snare sounds happening, which is what I wanted to display. We have this clap carbon. We have snare carbon. Snare high. So we'll have different textural elements to our snare, maybe at different parts of the arrangement for build-ups, for the choruses, whatever it may be. Let's make a new MIDI clip. We'll give it a color. And one easy trick I like to do if you're just doing really simple patterns, let's say you take this kick pattern that we just made, option click it, drag it down into the snare channel. And now all we have to do if we want a really basic kick snare pattern is move it over and then move it to the sound we want. We'll put it first on snare carbon. So this is the kick and the snare now together. But really, we're going to want maybe a different um, snare sound made up of multiple snares or percussive elements. So we're going to hit Command D on that snare. We're going to go to our new track and rename it anything you want. We'll just go snare 2. We'll rename our region as well. Snare, snare 2. Now we can take all of that information and we'll move it to the clap sound. We could rename it to clap or just leave it as snare 2. It really doesn't matter. So when we solo that, we hear that sound, when we solo this, we hear that sound. When we hear the two together, we're starting to build some texture here. Okay, let's just do it one more time for fun. And we'll rename it right away, snare three. We'll also rename that region, snare three. We'll go in there and we'll move all of those sounds to, let's change them to, Snare High Carbon. So that's what this one sounds like. Now here's all three together. So let's say that's my final snare sound composed of these three elements. We're going to select one of them, hit Command, and select the others. Now they're all highlighted. We're going to hit Command G and group them. Command R allows us to rename, and we're just going to go Snare G. 
we'll color coordinate it. And now when we collapse all of this, you see we have our snare group and our kick group. And we're going to collapse those really neatly organized and packed away. The problem here is if I have different elements of a kick drum, quote unquote, or percussive sounds, and I group them together because I'm layering, I can't group groups. So if I try to group these two groups together, Ableton won't let me do it. One way around this and one usable application for a bus would allow us to route many channels of audio or groups of audio into a final bus and route that bus finally into the master. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate right here. By going Option Command I, it brings up this IO section of the mixer. So does this button right here. If we expand these groups, we can see that they say master. The kick group and the snare group are being routed directly to the master. Any audio channel that's not in a group by default will be also directly going to the master as you can see in this audio track. So we already know that we can't group a group, but what we can do is take this audio track, we'll rename it Drum Bus. We'll give it a color and expand it. Now what we can do is take this kick group and send it to Drum Bus. That's the output of this grouping or any other audio channel. We're going to do the same thing with the snare. So now snare G is going from master output to drum bus. Now those two groups and all the audio and effects and everything they contain are being routed into drum bus where we can glue everything together. Drum bus will finally be routed to the master stereo bus and it already states that. To get all this working, all we have to do is hit in. And now, when we play back our pattern, the kick group and the snare group are going into the bus, and the bus is going into the master. Perfect. It's exactly what we want. Now from here, I can select some audio effects. Let's say I want this dynamic tube, I want this compressor, and I want this EQ8. And I'm now affecting all of those audio tracks that are contained in the groups on this one bus. That's going to allow me to finalize all of those percussive elements, and that's what the real power is here for me, uh, for organization, and especially for drum and percussion tracks where I may have many groups of things and then I'm going to finally want to group those groups together for purposes of finalizing the track and final organization. So from here now we can adjust our EQ, we can adjust our compressor, our dynamic tube, and that's going to be affecting every element of our uh, of our drum channel in our track all the elements of our percussive elements this is also great if I want to apply specific effects to a specific part of the arrangement just for a brief moment and maybe not do that to the master. Let's say I want to do a filter sweep on just my drums, or just my basses, or just my synths. It's really easy to do by setting up a bus and routing those things to that bus. Or you can do it by setting a group. The drawback of that is you cannot group a group. So if it's already in a group, you're going to have to make a bus to glue all of those groups together. So it's going from audio tracks to groups, to buses, finally to the master. So now, if I play back this and I do my little filter sweep, it's going to be affecting everything because everything is being routed through the drum bus.
So that's really the power of using buses. And if you see, when I collapse them, it's super neat and super organized. Now, let's say I have hi-hat group or a conga group or wood blocks or anything else like that. They're all going to get routed into my drum bus where I'm going to finalize them and glue them all together with compressors, effects, EQs, etc. Super simple to do and it's crucial in keeping everything organized. Um, I hope this was helpful and make awesome stuff. Love you guys. See you next time.